Hi everyone, so in this video, we're gonna see the different parts of a computer. Here, you're gonna understand everything you know about computer parts. So, we're gonna see all parts of computer. So, basically, this course is for beginners, but also for intermediate guys, you're gonna understand a lot of things. Okay, so let's get started. So, basically getting to know the different parts of a computer. We're gonna begin with the central processing unit or the processor. As you know, the processor in every comp computer is the first controller or the main part of the computer because it manages all operations and all signals in the computer okay so the cpu of course there there are many types of cpu okay so we can see that at the heart of every computer is the central processing unit or cpu we call it cpu think of it as the brain of your computer responsible for executing instructions and performing calculations. The CPU is made up of several key components, including the arithmetic logic unit, okay, and the control unit. So basically, in the CPU, you can find two major parts, arithmetic and logic unit that makes calculations, and the control unit that controls other components in the motherboard. So, the arithmetic logic unit performs mathematical operations such as addition and subtraction, while the control unit is responsible for fetching and executing instructions. So, we have then RAM or random access memory. So, RAM, also known as memory, is another crucial component of any computer system while the CPU handles the processing power, RAM acts as a temporary storage space for data that is actively being used by the CPU. The more RAM your computer has, the more data it can store for quick access, resulting in improved performance. So, RAM is volatile, means what? meaning it lo loses all data once the computer is powered off or restarted. So, RAM is a very important component because without a RAM, nothing going to be displayed in the screen. Then we have the storage devices, hard drive or solid state drive. So basically, when it comes to long-term storage, your computer relies on either a hard drive or a solid state drive. So here for the hard drive we have mechanical part and for solid state drive no mechanical parts. So both serve the same purpose of storing your files but they do so in different ways. A traditional hard drive contains spinning disk called platters which are read and written to using a mechanical arm, as you can see over here. In contrast, a solid state drive uses flash memory exactly like the RAM chip, resulting in faster and read and write speeds. ACCDs are becoming increasingly popular due to their speed and durability. So then we have the motherboard and expansion slots. Here you can find slots for graphic card, for USB card, for Ethernet cards, etc. Okay, so as you can see here, basically the motherboard acts as a main circuit board of your computer, providing a platform for all the other components to connect. It houses the CPU, the RAM, storage drivers, and other essential components. Additionally, the motherboard contains expansion slots. We call this expansion slots, okay? Which allow you to add or upgrade components in the future. This includes slots for a graphic card like this one, sound cards, and networking cards, among and networking cards. 
so basically here we have graphic processing unit we call it gpu okay so processor we call it cpu and graphic card gpu okay so while the cpu handles general computing tasks a separate graphic processing unit or gpu is responsible for handling graphics intensive tasks this includes rendering images and videos as well as processing complex visual effects in video games gpus have their own dedicated memory and processing power of course allowing them to work in tandem with the cpu to deliver seamless graphics performance then of course we have the power supply unit p as you as you can see here for of course the disk or computer so to keep all components running smoothly and correctly your computer requires a reliable power supply unit the psu is responsible for converting the electrical power from your wall outlet into the appropriate voltages required by the different compound inside your computer so these voltages can be 5 volt 12 volt minus 12 volt minus 5 volt 3.3 volt etc it ensures that each component receives a stable and consistent power supply preventing any damage or instability so then we have input and output devices of course including mouse this is basically input device okay so we have scanner this is input device we have touchpad this is input device speakers this is output device and keyboard this is input device okay so lastly we have the input and output devices which allow us to interact with the computer this includes the keyboard mouse monitor and speakers the keyboard and mouse are used to input commands and interact with software while the monitor and speakers display the output and provide audio feedback these devices are essential for us to communicate with our computers and make the most out of their capabilities so as a conclusion understanding the various components that power your computer can demystify the maze of technology and provide valuable insight into how your device functions from the cpu's processing power to the storage providing by hard drive and ssds or solid state drive so each component plays a vital role in enabling your computer to perform complex tasks by delivering into the inner working of your computer you can develop a greater appreciation for the technology that surrounds us and empower yourself to make informed decisions when it comes to upgrading and troubleshooting your machines so basically thank you very much guys this is basically an article that you can find in my website so this article basically is about as you can see do different parts of your computer so we have seen the cpu we have seen the random access memory or ram we have seen the graphic cards we have seen of course the hard disk drive or ssd source state drive for storage we have seen of course the input and output devices and of course there is other parts but this is the major part for example there is the bios the basic input output system the cmos battery the ich or chipsets etc so thank you very much please if you find that this video is good you can like it and of course subscribe and share and for anyone who want to join me in my patreon page for unique content and other useful information and of course if you if you look for schematics or data sheets you can find it in my patreon page thank you very much and see you in the next video